Hello, everybody. I hope you can all hear me. Happy Friday. Welcome. Come on in. I can see the chat is going as well, which is super exciting. I'm going to try and open that up. Anybody is like me and has multiple screens, it's all going today. Good morning. I think it's the morning. Well, technically afternoon. Hello. Come on in, everybody. Okay, we're going to give everybody about one more minute to load in, and then we are going to dive in. You can see people are engaging with the chat, which is awesome. If you want to say hello, if you want to say where you are joining us from today, that would be incredible. Um, Amazing. Look at all of this. Happy Friday, Ren. It is real. Almost the weekend. Another week down. Ready to relax into that weekend. We have Illinois. We have Washington. Joe, I see you from Mass. Let's go. Amazing. Oregon. Ontario. We have some local folks. Awesome. New York, Pennsylvania. I feel like I'm naming all the places I would love to go on vacation right now. BC, Calgary. I had to double check there when it said Dublin, but that is not Dublin, Ireland. Uh, Okie dokie. I think we are going to start diving in. So Welcome everybody to our Friday webinar. I am so excited that everybody has taken time out of your days to come and join us. I know you are all busy. I know you are jumping from the floor to the office or project to project. So we really do appreciate you taking some time to come and chat with myself and Frankie. Today, we're going to be diving into financial success for the year with Lily, Lilio Billing and Payments. If you are not aware, we used to be called Hi Mama, we have rebranded and we are now Lilio. So you will hear us referring to ourselves as Lilio throughout the webinar. Um, but that is okay if you still know us as Hi Mama. We are in a transition period and that's absolutely okay. So... Why don't we jump in, Frankie? We're going to do some intros. We're going to get things going. I do want to just say if you have any questions or any kind of things you want to say throughout the webinar, please feel free to use that chat. We do have our lovely, lovely marketing team keeping an eye on that. I will try and keep an eye on that a little bit as well. Um, So definitely keep engaging there. But Without further ado, Frankie, do you want to take us away and introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, everybody. Great to see you. A lot of folks, maybe some of you already know me, have spent the last couple of years with me. I'm seeing some familiar names in on the chat. Awesome. Good, good to see you all. Happy Friday. Um, yeah, my name is Frankie Edwards. I've been at Lilio for uh, just short of three years now, been working with our clients who use the billing and payments uh, feature since that time. My official title is the Senior Payments Success Manager. What does that mean? It means that I help you create your success with the numbers. Um, today, I am calling in from Treaty 13 territory in the city, uh, otherwise known as Toronto or Tacaronto. And a little bit more about me. I am a former small business founder, owner, entrepreneur. Uh, previous birth doula, nature-based mindfulness practitioner as well, with uh, quite a love for coaching business strategy. Um, and it really does all come down to money. What story is your business telling with the numbers? What story can we create if it's not where you want it to be right now? And what really lights me up is the ability to keep others accountable in ways that matter directly to their vision their success. And that is, you know, seeing the intersection of making financials, you know, the otherwise somewhat, some people would call it mundane practices mm -hmm. that come with that discipline and that practice, making that actually fun, seeing that intersection, and how that really intersects with how we as business folks can develop their own money mindset. 
Why? Because in order to be successful, we need to first believe that those of us working in childcare are making worthy of making a living. Okay. I'll repeat that again because if you uh, <laughs> if you stop listening right now and take one thing from this webinar, it's this that those of us working in childcare are worthy of making money and we're worthy of financial success. The role of childcare historically has not been one where we talk about money. So I want to make that change and it starts today. Thanks for being here, y'all. Hi, that is a, oh, that is a hard follow but as an intro, but a little bit into me. My name is Robin Cannon. I am one of the senior implementation specialists at here at Lilio with a focus on billing and payments. Essentially, what that means is I work with our customers and most of our bigger customers as they decide to adopt Lilio. I support with the training, the onboarding of the platform and the rollout to parents. So quick shout out to a couple of folks who I'm already working with. Joe, I saw you already in the chat. I hope Emma's here as well. And then also Jordan from Tender Years. These are my current customers that I am working with. We work with you all the way through kind of, like I say, from purchase to rollout. Um, a bit of my background, as you can probably tell, my accent is not native to Toronto. I am originally from Edinburgh in Scotland, where I qualified as a kindergarten teacher. I have a subject speciality of forest schooling in the early years, so taking littles into the woods every day. And from there, I transitioned into being a director of a center, and then I had my path lead me to Lilio to be able to enable directors and center owners like yourselves to reach that financial success that Frankie was talking about there. And I love what you said that everybody is worthy of financial success, especially in the early years. Everybody joins the earlier sector passion first, and it does not mean that you're not worthy of earning that money and making sure that you are successful. So it's like we set this up, Frankie. That was a beautiful little segue into a little bit on how this session is going to be broken out. So within the session, we're gonna be covering quite a lot. So Frankie, do you wanna break it down a little bit as to exactly what we are hoping to discuss and cover today? Yes, for sure. So, you know, clients have, at Lilio have found it helpful to kind of break down the year in simple blocks of time. So we're gonna do that as well in order to kind of visualize and plan out your project rollouts, you know, reach your success in increments. It doesn't have to be all in one go. Uh, so today we'll do the same. We'll, we'll go, we'll kind of start from the main event, what we're in right now, the back to school season. Then we'll go, is uh, doesn't always have to be around the December time though. Could this is more applicable to just in general if you are, are going to be closing your center at any time and what to do in those situations. Um, the third event is going to be tax season. We all love it. We all love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep telling ourselves that. And then at the end of the financial year, how to really kind of close your books and go from there. This is great. It's a year in a nutshell and four beautiful chapters. So we're going to work through it and let's dive in because I know time is of the essence for everyone. So here we go. It is the busiest time of the year. It is back to school. For me, it was always a super exciting time of the year as people get set for being back in the classroom or coming back after the summer or kind of enrollment is picking up maybe over the summer. Kids are starting to come back in. They're super excited about the summer that they just had. And you know, it's great. You can feel the energy. It's new year. We're setting ourselves up for success. But for a lot of centers, it's also the most stressful time of the year. And it can be even more stressful when we're starting to look at the finances. We're starting to think, okay, how is this year possibly going to be different from last year? How can I do better financially than I did last year? So Frankie, this is where I really want to tap into your expertise. And I'm, I'm really, really interested in hearing your advice or what your top tips would be for customers, whether you're new and you don't use Lilio yet, 
or whether you are one of our lovely reoccurring customers, how do we get into this back to school season so it is successful for us? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I want to spend a bit more time on this slide more than the others because it is back to school season right now. So we can kind of lean into these uh, best practice tips that we've have here. The, the top three um, and the main thoughts for, for my clients at the beginning of the school year, you know, specifically to your own success. I want you guys to be asking these questions to yourself as we go through. Mm -hmm. The first one being, do I have my payments policies set up properly? This, Absolutely. you know, policies range from registration policies, you know, parent handbooks, that kind of stuff, all the way down to what it means to actually use billing and payments. So pre-authorized debit agreements, payment policies, you know, this is the true time to get these things in order. If it takes a bit longer, no problem, but let's get it started right from the get-go. Um, I know some of my clients even have tuition plan contracts that they mm -hmm. get folks to sign and families to mm -hmm. sign on to. So that is, I would say, one of the biggest things in general. Absolutely. I think it, it outlines perfectly. It's how do you want to get your money? How are we planning to have our parents pay and setting that up from the beginning of the year is critical. Yeah. And if you don't have these things in place, no worries. Just call us. <laughs> we got We're you. here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second best one I'll say is that sustainable financial process. You know, do I have a sustainable, reliable process set up properly so that it works for me? You know, it can be unique to your own needs. But does it work for me in order to make sure that I make money on a consistent basis, right? There are multiple ways to set up tuition plans in Lilio. So from weekly, um, you know, monthly, semi-monthly, twice weekly, that kind of thing. Sorry, not twice weekly, bi-weekly. Um, and whether you charge a flat cost per billing cycle or if that is based on sort of like a tier system all the way down to a daily rate. You know, once we have those things set up, you basically can set it and forget it. Um, you know, it's never too early to actually to actually talk about these things and get it done. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think I want to pull out one thing you said there, and it was sustainable. Um, I think the other S word I'm going to go for there is scalable. Um, I don't think anybody wants to be in a position where what we roll out at back to school then hinders us as future selves because we didn't see the big picture. We didn't look long term and go, okay, what I'm doing right now, is this going to work for me in three, six, 12 months? Is this a sustainable practice? Because the hope is we've got more kids in six months than we have now. So the time you're spending right now, is that going to be sustainable and scalable as you're business grows as well. I really love that word sustainable that you mentioned there, Frankie. Yep. The third one, I would say, and this is top of mind for everybody. I actually had a director call just this morning and say, I didn't realize how much the parent relationship would matter in this role and how much people would be reaching out, asking about, you know, their balances, how much their invoices, that kind of thing. Um, and that kind of is the exact third best practice tip, make sure that your parent relations are on track, on target, right? How can I build the mm -hmm. best parent relationship I can? And that doesn't just have to come from you as like the finance person or the accountant or even the director. It comes from your teachers as well. You know, again, it goes back to starting the year as transparently as possible with mm -hmm. every policy outline, every fee outlined, everything reviewed and signed by all parties. And that's where Lilio can really come in handy. 100%. I love it. I, I really do think back to school is not just back to school for everybody coming in, is potentially back to the drawing board as well as a business, reviewing what we're doing, looking at it, is it still working? If it's a case of this is the way we've always done it, is that still best practice? I think it's so important to take this time to not only get prepared, but to reflect as well. 
how did the last year go? Do we want to do better? How do we do better? And having a system in place that works for you, again, works for you, you don't work for it, is incredibly important to have that set from the get-go. So following along that line of thought about, you know, getting set up for the, the year, we have some of the most common questions that Frankie and I hear from our customers. And, you know, I do want to pull out a couple of these so that Frankie, we can get your advice and your experience as to answer some of these questions and make sure that folks who are on the call today do get some answers here as well. So the first question that I did want to pull out that I thought was really important was how can I ensure all my parents are set up to pay on time? Yeah, great question. Parents are paying on time every time when you use Lilu. Um, and if they're not, well, stop. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> yeah. If they're not, please do let me know. So, yeah. Jokes aside, I'll answer this question in two parts. The first being, um, we do actually have a page fully dedicated to viewing which parent has not yet set up their payment profile, which means they don't have their payment details in. It's really super simple to send them all a reminder at once if it's more than just one parent. Um, and then basically the second part to that question or the second answer to that is that there's actually a way to enforce a digital auto pay policy as well. Um, and that comes from the center side of things. So it actually overrides the parent auto pay uh, setting. You can turn that on yourself as the administrator. And you know once you have that on, you're ready with it. Um, it's directly within the Lilio settings page on the billing side. And for example, say if you are using the enforced auto pay feature, say if all of your invoices are due on the first of the month, um, you will never have to worry about chasing another parent down for payment because the feature actually withdraws the funds automatically from that payment method that the parent has on file on the due date. Just think of all the mental stress that that relieves in your head. Like think of all of that. Everyone, I know you are out there. <laughs> <laughs> Jason parents the day after, uh, you know, you can now put that energy toward other important items uh, while still breathing easy that you actually have been collecting the appropriate amount of money. Uh, you have that money incoming for other stuff, you know, to pay your absolutely. operation, to pay your expenses, to pay your staff payroll. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Uh, the next question I wanted to just quickly tap on, because I know you mentioned it and that was the do I have to have parents sign pre-authorized debit agreements? So this is, again, something I think is really important to understand the kind of mandatory nature around pre-authorized debits. Yeah, for sure. So alongside our enforced auto pay feature, which I just mentioned, we do offer a digital pre-authorized debit agreement, a PAD agreement. Um, it is a feature that turns on automatically alongside the enforced auto pay. Um, it collects a one-time signature from parents and stores that signed document directly on the payer's page in billing. So we made that feature there so that you can choose well. Would like to keep it old school and have a physical copy of it with a signature um, that is available for download as well to add mm -hmm. to your registration documents or that kind of thing. Absolutely, fabulous. Um... I do also, I did also see that some folks in the chat were saying that, you know, it's fine to get payments on time until parents turn off auto pay. So I quickly wanted to just throw a quick flavor there to the chat to say that with our enforced auto pay, this is something that is center managed and center controlled. So the enforced auto pay does enable that mandatory auto pay for all parents and kind of overrides the parent ability to just decide to turn that off because you are entitled to your money. So quick flavor to the chat there about the auto pay. Um, last question here before we keep moving is, can I build for children starting in the middle of a cycle? Yep, yep. So for people starting in the middle of a cycle, I would actually recommend manually invoicing them that prorated amount first. Uh, very straightforward, very easy to do within the app. Just create a manual invoice. And then by adding them to their tuition plan, say at the same day or time that you sit down to do the manual invoice, 
um, their respective plan that you add them to will actually generate an invoice automatically going forward at the next, at the start of the next billing cycle. Love it. Amazing. Okay. The chat is hopping. I love it. Please put your, your, keep putting your questions in there. If we do not address them, marketing is collecting all of those. So please make sure that they're popped in there. We will try and get back to you in regards to those questions as well. So just to keep things moving, um, we are going into holidays and closures. Okay. So there are times in the year we know they come where the center is closed due to holidays, whether those are statutory holidays, whether those are in service days, training days, just times of the year where the center is closed. Um, and these days do tend to throw an additional complexity, shall we call it, into billing sometimes as to how we are going to keep track of our payments when our centers are shut. So Frankie, I know you've already shared great tips for back to school. We're really pulling on all your knowledge today. So when we are looking at those points of the year where there are holidays and we have closures, how are you setting up customers to manage these times in an easy kind of sustainable, let's use our word, manner there? Yeah. Yeah. It's so important to know the that the system exists to actually support your practices, right? So for holidays, any specific other type of closures, like even summer closures, it's something that's often overlooked by executive teams when deciding on a digital child care management software to purchase. Um, you need to know that the system is going to work for you, right? And when it comes to holiday closures, whether it be a long-term pause, short-term pause, whatever, you can mm -hmm. actually implement that in the system. One of the examples that I want to bring, draw from here is that we've got a pretty simple way to turn off tuition plans um, so that it makes pausing any sort of auto-generated invoices during a certain time period pretty much a breeze. Um, you can pause it at any time. You can either turn off the tuition plans altogether or delete them if you want. So uh, a few different ways to do that. We've also got a pretty simple way outside of billing, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, sidetrack, but in the message center to actually just yeah. schedule a message um, to all or even some families to let them know about that break. So mm -hmm. we've got you covered there. Um, yeah, there's there's so many features. Um, so terms... many ways. So many, so many ways. <laughs> Frankie's like, uh, I'm just going to list them off. <laughs> in terms of policy, I mean, yeah, we talked about it earlier with that enforced auto pay feature. Uh, it's a great one. Uh, yeah, for anyone experiencing the issue of parents turning off auto pay, no problem. That overrides it. Um, and also, we do have a, a credit and discount feature as well, which might allow you to help you know plan ahead uh, give you or give a client a discount if needed say for a certain type of closure um, or even give them a credit so that it's just existing on their balance uh, for a future date I love it. and then yeah and then routine just on the third part there you know when making a, a tuition plan for a child or even a group of children you can also schedule in advance when you want that plan to begin. So you could, in theory, sit down in September, even if you have children maybe that aren't starting till January, actually mm -hmm. set them up way in advance um, and set the tuition plan not to begin until January 1st. So a few good things to get back into the swing of things. Um, you know, you don't want families mm -hmm. being left behind when you have either expected or unexpected closures in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of you, Florida, today. Hope everything yes. is okay. 100%. And, you know, most of my clients actually sit down, I would say, once a month and just ensure things are actually set up properly for the next billing cycle ahead. 100%. And I think this brings back to kind of what we mentioned about having a system that works for you. Um, knowing that January 1st, center is closed, but invoices are still going to automatically withdraw funds is the kind of business we love to see and have working for us, which is awesome. Okay, Frankie, here we go. Question time. I hope everybody's ready. I hope everybody's hanging in there. So very quickly going to dive into a couple of these questions. So I kind of mentioned there 
around that am I still able to get payment from parents when the center is closed over the holidays? So you can very lightly tap into that one in a little bit more detail if you'd like, Frankie. Yeah, and I would say I did mention like pausing the tuition plans. It doesn't mean you need to pause on actually accepting payments. So, um, you know, if if parent has an overdue invoice, they still do have access to their invoices. Um, they can pay ahead of time. They can pay any of the overdue invoices they still have, even if you do, say, pause your tuition plans for a certain closure. Um, and uh, I'll give you a little heads up, sneak peek on <laughs> another new feature that's coming out in billing, which is um, it'll give the parents the ability to actually pay several invoices at once. Um, to kind of scoop up that money, uh, also less transaction yeah. fees on everybody's part. So, you know, everyone's winning there, getting getting money paid quicker, getting invoices. <laughs> That's what we want. I love that. Sorry, I'm giggling because I've just seen all the capital yeses in the chat to that little sneak peek, all the very excited. I love it. You're as excited as we are that that feature is coming. Trust me. Um, fabulous. Okay, next question I want to dump in, jump into is how do I track payments that come in while we are closed? Yeah, pretty simple. Um, payments are, are happening automatically. Um, invoices are also switched to paid automatically. So, of course, you have two pretty good reports that you can see any new payments as well. Um, the accrued invoices report that shows invoice status. Uh, so you can see what date an invoice was due when it was paid. Uh, and also the second report, the payment transaction report uh, shows the date that the transaction occurred. Super helpful uh, if you need to show your accounting teams those types of information. Love it. Okie dokie. So here we go. We're going to keep moving. And Frankie, I don't know if you're ready. It's tax season. Here we go. I don't know about everybody else, but this is not everyone's favorite time of the year. I hate to say that. Um, but Frankie and I did really well. We got you hooked on the good times. We did back to school. We did holidays and closures. You're thinking about those vacation days. But we do now need to speak a little bit more businessy and bring in possibly a little bit of boring with the fun and talk about tax season. It is an incredibly, incredibly important time of the year as a business owner, as a parent, as a payer. So Frankie, you have a huge amount of experience, not just from like the business ownership side that you kind of tapped into in your intro, but also to the customer side. And you work with our largest customers here at Lilio. So what are you doing? What steps are you taking? What tips are you giving so that tax season is hassle-free and seamless for everyone from our smallest folks to our biggest folks? Yeah, you would not believe it how much time this specific feature has saved folks thinking of Lori yesterday Lori I know you're here and just like the immediate relief that you conveyed when we were going over this little piece here the the tax receipt publishing feature you know let's not deny it tax season used to be a nightmare I would say no more you can shake your hands of that and just yeah move on from this so basically in Lilio, the great news is that we've eliminated virtually any manual work that you need to do when it comes to tax season. Um, the easiest way to distribute tax receipts to families is to use, like I said, that feature called tax receipt publishing feature. It's within the billing settings page itself. So whenever In you're ready house, to- we love yeah. it. <laughs> whenever you're ready to release those receipts, you can do it literally with one click. Um, you have an option to add your signature, add your name, make sure that your tax ID information is correct, your center address is correct, that type of thing. But literally one click, um, and it what it does is actually shoots it out to all the parents on their side. Um, they can access their tax receipt then on their app. Even if they have their app deleted, they can go on uh, Lilio on the website and actually just log in even on their computer, say months later and get that information, save it themselves, print it themselves. You do not have to worry about distribution with that anymore. 
I love it. So what I'm picking up is you're saying we no longer have to make a tax receipt individually per child. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what are we going to do with the time? I feel like so many hobbies are going to be picked up by this. Just be like, I have time. <laughs> what am I going to do? I love it. Okay. Anything else you want to add here, Frankie, before we jump into questions? Uh, no, I think this is pretty straightforward. This feature is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, and if you do have any questions, I'm happy to to answer those um, either in an email or you can just call our, directly into our support team. I love it. Okay, let's dive into questions. Now, with these questions, I am going to go through all four of these because I do think with tax season, it's really important to make sure that everything we are sending out is accurate. It is, you know, do it right the first time so we're not having to do it multiple times. So just diving in at question number one here, can my tax ID appear on the receipt? Yep, you betcha. Um, tax IDs are, so within the logins and configurations section of your Lilio app, uh, you go in there within the center settings section, um, just make sure all of that is correct. Your, not only your tax ID, but your center name, like I said, your address, your phone number, um, all of that actually shows up on the official tax receipts. So everyone's receipt has that crucial information on it. Um, even if you don't have a center uh, tax ID, like I know a lot of clients in, in Canada just you know don't have that, no problem. You could even use the spot as your, say, business number, your EIN number, um, that type of thing. So put anything relevant and crucial in that box. Yeah. Um that is great. And sorry, I'm reading the chat at the same time here. So people are asking, I'm actually going to take this one a little ad hoc, that is there a way that we can see kind of totals parents have paid thus far, like almost like a mid-year tax receipt? Is there a way that we can see that tax receipt mid-year or can we only see that at the end of the year? Yeah, so you can pull individual tax receipts. That, that has always been an option. Um, totally no problem. It's just within the children page. Um, so say if, a, yeah, if a child say graduates in June, um, just search their name within the children page. Uh, instead of adding the invoice, there's a little drop down arrow, click that and view their tax receipt there. Um, so that'll be basically up to par all of their payments that they've made to you so far. And what I would suggest is just give that to them kind of as like an offboarding gift, yeah. <laughs> a gift if you will and then that way they have record if they come to you six months later and also ask no problem it'll also be in their app when you release it so either way love it okay i'm not going to go over the well tax receipts need to be emailed because you've mentioned that they do go directly to the parents app so parents can access that directly there uh, how can i make sure my tax receipts are accurate i'm going to jump in a little bit just here because there is some stuff going on in the chat where folks are asking about um, EFT transaction fees that are uh, appearing on tax receipts. For folks who have those questions in the chat, please email support at highmama.com with that question. They will be able to support you with that. That is, a, again, support at highmama.com. If you have Frankie as your CSM, please email Frankie directly. You will have their contact information. So just for the chat there, but Frank, I'm going to let you dive in here a little bit more about how can I make sure my tax receipts are accurate? Yeah, definitely. Um, tax receipts are accurate as per the transaction date that the invoice was paid. So it's quite simple to see that info. Um, we do have a report in the Leo billing. Uh, I've mentioned it already. It's the payment transaction report. Um, you can easily get the total amount paid by the parent. If their payment is within the calendar year, then it will be on their tax receipt for that year. Love it. Amazing. Okay. And last but not least, what if a child has left the center? Do I have to make their tax receipt separately or manually? Yeah, good question. I, I did already kind of touch on this. Um, yeah. Good practice. I mean, you can always print it for the family or email it to them like, um, sorry, as actually pulling that manually for the child specifically. Um, so no problem. You can do that. Again, if they 
come back to you, say, six months later when it's now the new year and they need their tax receipt, no problem. It's already within their Lilio app as well, as long as you've published all of them. So yep. either way, you can pull manually or you can publish everyone's all at once. Love it. Yeah, I think that feature was a huge like add to our book of like support is that even when our children have graduated out, as long as you publish those tax receipts, those parents will still get that in their app. Love it. Okay. Everybody's still hanging in there. I see the chat's quieting down. So I hope that doesn't mean people have left us, Frankie. I'm hoping that we're just starting to answer some of their questions. But our last chapter we are going to touch on today is the end of the financial year. You know, we are rounding at the end of the year. We're looking at closing our books. It's been another successful year. So Frankie, how are we approaching the task of closing out our books? Yeah, uh, end of finances, you know, you want to close up your books properly. And that will really, honestly, I'll be honest, give you three top reasons that will make it easier from Lilio for this. Reports and reports. Three, you know, it sounds funny, but... We'll go back full circle here to, you know, the beginning of our conversation, the policies that you had set up last year at this time, the practices that you've been following throughout the year, say on a month to month basis, some people even do it week to week, um, you know, they're going to help you so much when it comes to the end of the year. So it's going to be where you actually get to finally kind of reap the rewards of those monthly reconciliation practices that you've been doing. Um, you know, perks of some of the reports we have at your fingertips. Um, I know what happens at this time of year, you know, where's my receipt book? <laughs> Where did I put that paperwork? Did Where my was that book folder book? gone? I yeah. read all that. Like, I have no idea. You know, honestly, if it's in the app, it's digital. So you don't have to worry about losing any of that information. And the reporting is all kept up to date whenever you access it. Um, on top of that, our billing reports are actually CSV exportable. What that means is you can open it up on any sort of device, any sort of app, uh, sheets, Google numbers, anything at all. So it's it's very, very critical. I get it, I agree. Having you know that all year round accessible data is gonna be so key and you're gonna love that fact. So. What are some of the reports you may ask? I did already, again, mention these a few uh, minutes ago, but what I will say is the payments transaction report um, is probably the one of the most <clears throat> important reports we have when it comes to getting all the details for what has actually been incoming to you. So your accounts receivable. Um, in terms of what's left outstanding, your accrued invoices, that report, is going to be your next best bet because uh, again it says invoice status so you can actually just filter and just quickly see numbers for every everything that's in overdue say um, the aged invoices report again it is another good one it only gives you uh, invoices that are not paid which might be even more helpful if you want to like, drill down there and then high level uh, the cash flow summary is also really great. You know, mm -hmm. if your accountant needs details on other types of revenue that are incoming, like subsidy, for example, um, that's in the cash flow summary as well. We also have like a separate just subsidy report if you need it. So, you know, at that time of year, it's the end of the books. You know, I cannot stress it enough. Absolutely critical to get the information that you need and have it handy whenever you need it. So you do have everything all in one place when it comes to mm -hmm. Lilio reporting. Um, and it takes months and months of work off of your plate. Absolutely. I love it. Okay, we're gonna go into questions. And the first question I wanna field very quickly, and you can definitely add your expertise here, Frankie, is quite a few times in the chat, I've seen folks asking about our integration with, QuickBooks. And I have that as the last question here. How can I partner my reports with my account software? So accounting software, bookkeepers, accountants. So Frankie mentioned all our reports are CSV exportable, which means depending on the version of QuickBooks you are using, 
They are compatible with upload capabilities directly into QuickBooks. We, both Frank, I say we, both Frankie and I have a lot of experience. Lilio as a whole has a lot of experience of partnering with centers who use QuickBooks and how we are able to facilitate the use of the two platforms side by side. Um, when you export our reports, some folks like to import that directly into their QuickBooks. Some folks like to adjust their reports, work with their reports, get their account totals on our reports, and then just add that to their correct chart of accounts or account in QuickBooks. But we do have a kind of support for all of that. So I've answered that a little bit, that last question. I jumped in there just because I saw that coming up in the chat a couple of times. Anything else you'd like to add to that, Frankie? Love it. And thank you. Yeah, the the reporting in Lilio um, is on a cash based approach. So if you know anything about accounting, that is one thing just to keep in mind. Um, many of our clients use the revenue totals from the transaction report and the cash flow summary report. Like I mentioned, they take those totals and put it directly into their software. Um, I have a ton of clients that are using QuickBooks alongside Lilio. No problem. I also have a lot of clients that only use Lilio. Um, I also have a lot of clients that use Sage or some other type of software. So, you know, it it is kind of like um, whatever you, you choose to do and how you've been doing your accounting process already. I know there is certain other um, pieces that you want to kind of manage from, you know, an accounting or finance team perspective. So maybe that is that you continue to use your other software for that, no problem. Um, and then Lilio can kind of cover the basics in terms of your incoming receivables from tuition, from subsidy directly. Love it. Hi. Uh, our little jump in there covered our last year. How can I provide reports to my accountant? Um, I then also want to just cover these other, like I'm going to just take one because of time and it's going to be, what do I do if we only had parents pay through Lilio? halfway through the year. I saw that in the chat as well. So I can't remember the name who posted this, but this is for you, this one. Yeah, thanks for that. It's a pretty common question. Um, it happens quite often, of course. You know, nobody really graduates right on time. It's right at the end of the year. Uh, and we coming to us at all time here and using different softwares, softwares, different other competitors, that type of thing. Asking how do we keep good reconciliation um, how do we keep that in a good way going forward? And as we're transitioning to Lilio, what does that look like? Um, often the best practice is inputting one invoice, and I'll call it like a year to date invoice for the family or for the child. Um, that kind of culminates the combined everything that they have already paid you before you started Lilio. Um, and then that way, it's basically a year to date amount invoice. Um, you can input, you know, how they pay the invoices, that kind of thing. But as long as you have the total cost correct, mm -hmm. then that will show up perfectly within the tax receipt at the end of the year for that family. Um, it'll still be accurate whether they paid you within the Lilio software or whether they paid you some other way. I love it. Amazing. So I think that's kind of rounding our time out together here. So my, my very last slide is just a massive, massive thank you. On behalf of myself and Frankie and everyone here at Lilio, thank you so much for taking this time out of your day to come and just hang out with me and Frankie and talk billing and payments. I have never seen a chat be so engaged with in a webinar before. So thank you every single one of you for putting your questions in. If we were not able to answer your question, there is going to be a poll going live in the chat. Please engage with that poll so we can put you in contact with someone here at Lilio who is able to answer that question. If you are a current customer who is having questions or concerns, please email our support team at support at highmama.com or reach out to your account manager. If you are not sure who that is, support can send you the right place. If you are a current customer, again, if you're not sure who your account manager is, please reach out to support. Again, I cannot thank you enough from both Frankie and I for joining us and engaging in such a positive way. Um, 
And that is a wrap from us. I'm going to be hanging out here just for a couple more minutes as you start to engage with the poll, give you time to engage there. But happy Friday, everyone. We've made it. Have a fantastic weekend. And please do reach out to us if you have any questions or would like to learn any more. Yeah, and I would just like to echo that. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate everybody here. Uh, lots of lots of familiar names I'm seeing. So this is great to see and a few new ones. So hope to see you soon. I uh, really, really appreciate you joining us today.